an economic crisis has engulfed Pakistan. CPI inflation for November clocked in at 23.8% on a year-over-year -year basis. Foreign exchange reserves fell 60% by early December and the rupee continues to lose ground against US dollar. Against this backdrop, the meaningful decline in current account deficit comes as a sign of relief for the battered economy. Pakistan registered a 47% year-over-year drop in current account deficit for the first four months of the current financial year to $2.82 billion thanks to the fall in imports. State Bank of Pakistan issued data that shows imports have remained low with their dollar values dropping year-over-year year every month. But there's a catch. Sarfarah Khan highlights it in his piece for Dawn's Business and Finance Weekly. Although a portion of the 11.6% drop in imports could be attributed to economic slowdown, some of it is due to extreme measures taken by the central bank to restrict imports such as delays in opening letters of credits. But these administrative measures won't last long, especially since they also hurt the economy including export-oriented industries and also violate conditions placed by Pakistan's lenders. On the other hand, high interest rates imposed by the State Bank of Pakistan should push Pakistan's aggregate demand lower, leading to a drop in demand for imports. To keep a lid on imports, policymakers must find ways to reduce Pakistan's energy bill and this can only be done by strengthening refineries and taking steps to conserve power. Energy products make up 29% of Pakistan's total imports in July. We spent about $1.7 billion buying 2.4 million tons of crude oil, according to Pakistan Bureau of Statistics. Although with Brent hovering in the low 80s per barrel range, crude oil import bill should decline moving forward. But more needs to be done, especially on refined petroleum products, which came with a hefty price tag of $2.84 billion. Pakistan usually gets most of its petrol and 35% of diesel from abroad. But with domestic oil refineries facing shutdown threats and running on unusually low utilization rates, the pressure on imports may increase. But there is a way out. Government should make serious efforts to ensure domestic oil refineries run their plants at a healthy utilization rate of over 90%. Now, it may be an unpopular decision, but the benefit to the economy will likely outweigh cost of minor increase in electricity bills. The government may also have to take some tough decisions like early closure of commercial markets and marriage halls as well as the reduction in working hours to stem outflow of foreign exchange. And to shore up forex reserves, the government needs to enhance export and remittances. We know it's easier said than done. Increasing exports when big economies like US, Europe and China are under stress will be a task and then some. This would take some serious efforts and no giving unconditional subsidies to the export sector will not help. If anything, such measures will likely reduce fiscal space for an already cash-strapped government. The remittances have also declined by 8.6%. Now. This may be due to many factors such as the Saudization of workforce in Saudi Arabia or anemic growth in labor exports to UAE. We can't ignore use of Hawala Hundi due to unusually large difference between interbank and open market exchange rates and a shortage of dollars. Policymakers must examine this closely to arrest the slide in remittances and sustain a low current account deficit.